It's lovely to welcome you all here to the third um, round of the Nutrient Ag Solutions Community Grants Program. I'd firstly like to acknowledge um, the country that I'm coming to you from today, and um, which is Ewan country in um, New South Wales. So um, in the distance there is Mount Gulaga in Tilba Tilba. Um, and I'd just like to acknowledge and um, thank the custodians of First Nations people of Australia um, for looking after our country and continuing to look after the country. Um, and I'd like to welcome you and um, hope you're all enjoying the country that you're on today. Um, we'll be doing a little bit of an introduction um, with regards to FRRR and what we do and also Nutrien, talking about the Nutrien Ag Solutions Community Grants Program. Um, and after we've had a chat about that, I'll have a bit of a pause and we'll have time for questions. Please feel free to put questions in the chat as we go along um, because I will reference them at this point as well. So um, I'd just like to understand, you know, there's a lot of people here that may be really great grant writers but just want to know the specific criteria around this grant program. Um, but there may also be people that aren't as confident in grant writing. And so the third section here is... Um, you know, those tips and tricks about applying for a grant, um, not just an FRRR grant, but really any grant. So, um, you know, do feel free if, if you are a very confident, um, you know, grant writer, not to not to stay for the whole session. If, if you've got other things to do, I really value your time and I want to make this as useful a session um, as possible for everyone. So firstly, I'll just give you a little bit of a, a background on FRR. Um, we have been around since 2000 and um, we were created by government and philanthropy with the purpose of ensuring that there was funding available in remote, rural and regional Australia to support community organisations like yourself, um, really um, ensuring that there is funding to support the vitality of smaller communities that don't necessarily have the same access to other funds. Um, I'd like to introduce Maddie now, Madeline Muirhead, the Corporate Affairs Coordinator, and she'll just um, give you a little bit of a chat about Nutrien. Thanks, Danielle. And yeah, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you all so much for joining. Um, it's great to see such amazing engagement again on our third year of the program. We're very, very excited to be rolling it out again. Um, so as Danielle said, my role is a Corporate Affairs Coordinator at Nutrien, um, which a major part of that role is overseeing our community investment initiatives, which obviously includes um, our wonderful community grants program that we deliver in partnership with FRRR. Um, you can skip to the next page if you like, Danielle. I'll keep it really brief, but just for those of you who maybe haven't interacted um, with Nutrien yet, um, you will be soon. Uh, Nutrien is the largest provider of agricultural services uh, here in Australia, and we have a footprint of more than 700 locations um, all across the country. So if you haven't seen us yet, I reckon now after seeing our logo, you'll be noticing it about the place. Um, so we're, as a company, we're really, really passionate about going further for our Australian farmers, but also for our communities um, that are supporting Australian agriculture, supporting our business and our people um, and, and our farmers as well. So we're a really important part of our business is investing back into those communities who support us um, and so you know through the community grants program in partnership with FRRR we're really really excited to be you know supporting those local grassroots organizations that have those meaningful community projects um, in, in, in our rural and regional communities and so you can see sort of a few of the um, photos from previous projects down the bottom there and we're really really proud to have already supported about 110 projects all across the country so um, yeah, as I said before, we're super excited to be delivering this again. Um, you know, we're, we're really here for Australian agriculture and our rural and regional communities, and we're really excited to see another wonderful cohort of grant recipients this year. Um, so I'll hand back over to you, Danielle. Lovely. Okay, we will just um, make sure I've got everyone in the room because we've got more people joining us all the time, which is great. Okay, so as Maddie said, um, the program commenced in 2021 and as you can see, um, we've got grants right across Australia, um, 110 grants so far um, of half a million dollars. 
The program, this year's program is open now and it will close on the 10th of August. Um, grants are up to $5,000. We've had grants, I think, as small as $1,500. Excuse my dog. And um, look, it's really about equity in regards to how we distribute those grants. Um, so, um, you know, we're, we're looking for applications from wide, far and wide across the country. Um, really with that focus on local grassroots organisations, um, understanding that, you know, these are the people that understand what their communities need and, and what will actually contribute to their success, vibrancy and wellbeing. A local connection with a Nutrient Branch Manager is an application requirement. So, so just um, understanding um, that is really important. Um, and also just um, if you have any challenges with that, knowing that you can contact FRR and um, we can we can help you to get in touch with them if you're having any challenges. Okay, um, I think it's always really good to see what's been funded in the past. So um, I'm just going to run through a few projects. Um, this was obviously Swansea, Tasmania, and this was an application for $5,000. Um, and they were requesting beach wheelchairs and also other equipment which would support both elderly residents and disabled visitors in actually accessing the beach of that area. Um, you know, this is a really great um, example of inclusion, um, ensuring that everyone has um, the ability to um, participate in life and supporting, you know, the broader community um, the organisation here, the Mayshore Health Centre, um, they were actually going to coordinate it, make sure um, these beach wheelchairs were available, could be hired, all those kind of things. So a really well thought out project with regards to how this was actually going to make the community more inclusive and, um, you know, expand the capacity for people to participate in the beautiful country they're on. Um, another very different project, but again, just demonstrating that, that real understanding of what's needed in the community. Um, a wellness lunch was um, hosted for women in Charters Towers by a group called the Prospect Community Service. Um, once again, you know, this application, um, you know, told us um, the needs of women in that community, that um, they really wanted to reach out and, and, and bring them together and create that network, which we know strengthens um, communities when people know um, people that are around. Um, and they were really successful. More than 90 women attended the luncheon. Um, they had great speakers. Um, and, you know, it also inspired them so that they are connected and they're looking at what they can do next. Um, and another, once again, very different project, um, restoring the ghost signs in Woodstock, um, New South Wales. So this was, you know, recognising that there were some beautiful historic um, old signs in the town and, um, you know, requesting that they could get funds to actually restore that signage, which not only contributes to um, highlighting the historical significance of the community, it adds to the pride of the community and we also know it, you know, um, tourists um, always linger a little longer if there's things to see. So you can see there's a contribution to the economic um, benefits of that community but also just that sense of identity in that community. With regards to eligibility for this program, it's open to all not-for-profit organisations and it doesn't require you to have um, deductible gift recipient status. You just have to be a not-for-profit. Um, if you have any challenges with regards to um, your ABN or incorporation certificate um, requiring that evidence in your application, speak to FRR. Um, you can only apply once per round for a project. Um, and obviously it's only rural, regional and remote communities um, that are eligible. We do... Um, limit uh, who can apply every year so that the same organisations that were successful last year are not actually able to apply in this round. Um, we do that to, you know, um, spread the love, I guess, around so that more organisations get an opportunity. 
Um, this is really about, you know, charitable projects with public benefit. Um, we will fund, you know, activities, events, programs and services, um, purchasing or hiring equipment and materials, community infrastructure, organisational capacity, um, including strategic planning um, and, you know, developing community resources. So it's a really open, broad grant um, that's there to provide an opportunity to um, your community. What we can't fund, um, really specifically things like sporting activity and equipment um, development or programs, these aren't charitable under the Australian Taxation Office. Um, and so we do ask any sporting organisations that we know are often backbone um, strengths in communities to consider projects that will actually have a really broad community benefit and aren't just advancing the sport or the people that play those competitive team sports. We can't fund ongoing core organisational costs, however we can fund project costs. So if you've got um, wages or salary that's specific to the project that you're delivering, this is definitely eligible to be funded in this program. Things like prizes, gifts, trophies or awards aren't eligible for funding. Um, if you're having an event or doing something where you're looking to do prizes, we suggest you speak to a local business or look at how you might um, fund that through another source. Um, the project must be occurring after these grants are announced. So these grants will be announced in mid-October. So we're looking for projects that um, are aimed at starting around November 2023 and will be finished by November, December 2024. Obviously, the projects do need to be inside Australia um, and we don't fund political parties, lobby groups or religious promotion. So quite literally, it's $5,000 grant for your community. Um, what would you like to do with it? Um, really thinking of what's the project, who will it benefit, um, who will be involved um, and do you need any, you know, is there anything, you know, really important that you need such as a council permit or um, evidence of who owns the buildings or the land on which you're actually proposing to do work? So as I said, I might just pause now. As I said, it's a very broad program, but um, I'll pause stop sharing and um, just open up the floor a little bit in regards to um, people like asking any questions more specifically to the grant right now. Um, so this is more generalistic, though I will refer to certain things with regards to the Nutrient Program as well. Um, just quickly, as we spoke about, um, you know, identifying opportunities when you're looking at funding. One thing is that um, this program doesn't have to be a $5,000 project. You can have a bigger project that you're looking for funds to this to be part of and you may be receiving funding from any of those sources, government, local business, philanthropy, um, crowdfunding or, um, you know, other partners or collaborators in the community. So, um, and we do... We do encourage you to to look at other opportunities and sometimes um, leverage the different funders because it can be great to evidence that you've got support from other organisations when you're putting a project together. It, it demonstrates a bigger value project. Um, just from, as I said, you know, that really getting down to brass tacks in regards to writing a grant application this is a, a highly subscribed grant, um, so we're really looking for those projects that are really clear. Um, so, you know, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Who, how, when, where, how much? Um, you know, we, we kind of look at it and say, what kind of issue is being solved here or what kind of opportunity is being created for the community? Um, it's great um, to see what kind of evidence you can provide in regards to the what and kind of how it's come about. Um, you know, why has this solution been chosen for the community? Why is it most relevant? Um, why is it most needed? Um, so really any evidence or um, 
stories that you can tell us with regards to the catalyst for your project is is so valuable for um, us as assessors to to kind of see. Also, understanding who will be involved. Um, you know, often there's different businesses or different community members um, that may be involved in your project. Um, what volunteers, what participants, what beneficiaries, um, you know, often schools, high schools, um, men's sheds, all those people, you know, understanding how your organisation and your project <coughs> actually con connects into the rest of the community is a really valuable thing for us to understand. Um, and also if you're doing something that's quite complex or um, people consider needs a level of expertise, it's good to understand if your volunteers um, you know, have an engineering background or, you know, you're working with a particular partner or consultant who's um, supporting your environmental approach. So just anything you can tell us about that is really valuable as well. Um, the how, just breaking it down into really the stages of the project so it's very clear actually, you know, um, what will happen and when. Um, the tasks, you know, making sure it's, it seems logical in regards to how that project is being approached. Um, what resources you have available. Um, it helps us to go, oh, I wonder if how they're going to do marketing, you know, if that's not actually mentioned or once again, we, we've discussed it, you know, quite a bit in regards to the ownership of land um, or who will be involved um, and also those responsible um things such as insurance, things like public liability if there's events. Um, it's always really important for us to not have any questions when we're looking at a project. Um, when it will happen and where it will happen. Um, the when is obviously very happen, very important with regards to uh, the timing of this grant, when the funding will be available and when we're expecting um, the project to be completed. Um, these grants do have a 12-month timeline um, in which we expect people to complete their project, um, noting that we, we do appreciate um, if challenges happen and we're always open to talking those kind of things through. But um, at the start in the application, we really want to see a good, you know, timeline. And obviously where it will happen. Um, this is about local communities. Um, so, you know, bigger projects um, that are kind of trying to cover, you know, a whole state or even a national approach is often a little bit um, against the grain with these kind of programs because we're really looking at that grassroots and actually understanding where that impact is going to be had. Look, budgets are really important in writing a grant application. Um, FRR application is online and we have room there for you to tell us about the income that will support the project and that includes both what the amount of funding you're requesting, um, any funding that you might be providing as an organisation yourself and any other funders um, that you have involved. Um, once again, if we see that you've got $50,000, it doesn't mean we're there, oh, they've got enough money. Um, you know, if you're really clear that what you need for this grant is the $5,000 and what it pays for, you know, we're very um, happy to go, well, that's great. It's going to really make this project happen. So when you tell us what you're actually spending the money on, um, be very clear where these funds will go. Um, Give us any rationale or, or quotes if they're available, particularly for items over $500. Um, we do appreciate that sometimes it can be difficult to get quotes um, from tradespeople or from consultants um, within the timeframes of the grant application. So if you have to do a guesstimate, try and find some kind of logic that you can present to us. Um, we're pretty open-minded um, to, to kind of look at how you've, how you've budgeted. Um, so just, just try and make it, you know, logical and rational. Also, please include things like volunteer hours, donated goods and donated services. A, they demonstrate the immense value um, that your organisation is bringing to your community um, through those volunteers or, or pro bono goods that you're able to source. And it really shows us how, how much the project is being supported by, by other people. Um, and that obviously 
shows us how valued the project is. So really writing the application, um, you've got, you know, probably 14, 15 days, two weeks almost um, to finish the application. So make sure you've got all your information or you're gathering it all now. Do read the guidelines. While this is a broad community grant, the more you um, align yourself to, you know, those ideas of meaningful community projects, um, vibrant communities and, and strong outcomes, um, the easier for us to see that it aligns to this objective. Answer all the questions. Um, please attach a letter of support from the Nutrient Branch Manager and this letter of support can be, you know, an email from the branch manager if, if that's what they send you. So, you know, once again, we're flexible with regards to that media. Um, any other letters of support that you might get from community members are also really highly valued. Um, and really important, please provide the appropriate financials. Um, we do request um, 12 months um, of financials from the last 18 months. Um, if you have any challenges in that, um, we know sometimes, you know, finalising books is a bit difficult, give us a call um, so that we understand. Um, please don't leave it to the last minute. Um, there's a lot of people applying and, and things like the financials not being attached or them being old is something that could make you immediately ineligible because we may not have time to chase you up. Um, if you're a new organisation, um, you just need to provide us with evidence of possible bank statements or that for as long as you've been running so that we can verify um, how the organisation's been set up and how funding is currently coming through and being um, managed by the organisation. I really like this slide. Um, it's my guide whenever I have to write um, a grant. Um, just that idea of using clear, simple language doesn't need to be fancy language. Um, facts and evidence. Um, please spell out any acronyms. Um, very often we don't know the programs that you might be referring to or something that's particularly local, so um, make it really easy for us to understand what you're talking about. Do tell us your story, um, you know, any background on the organisation or also on the project um, is, is wonderful for us to know. Um, be really specific when answering the questions and make it clear how you're going to use the requested funds. Just as a bit of background, um, we do, we, we look at how well the project meets the criteria um, and how strong um, the project is with regards to the need in the community. Um, my, so I'm the program manager for this and I work with um, a couple of support officers Together, we do preliminary assessment and um, review of applications. And then we present um, a shortlist to an advisory program um, that includes um, some nutrient um, executives and also um, an FRRR program lead and the CEO. So um, we have a broad range of people looking at this. Um, just with regards to the nutrient um, branch manager, um, he can endorse as many projects um, that come to him in his community, so there's no bias there. And, um, yeah, the, the the people that are assessing are actually removed from the branch manager um, kind of network, so there's also no bias there as well. Um, at the end of the day, um, the recommendations are made to the FRRR CEO and she will actually consider and approve the projects for final funding. Um, all applications are notified um, via email about the outcome. If you're successful, um, you'll receive an email with details on how to access the funds. Um, and Nutrient Ag Solutions um, will often contact you to organise a local award recognition event. If you're unsuccessful, um, once again, you'll receive an email. Um, and we do ask that you give us a call and find out, you know, what the strengths or weaknesses were of your project um, and also to discuss with us any other funding options. I can't recommend highly enough, um, you know, speaking to FRRR people on the phone um, with regards to your project. Um, a, they know all the other programs that we're doing and um, many of them have years of experience 
in, um, you know, reviewing grant applications. And so they can really um, make the difference for you with regards to um, how well your program fits with this project. While reporting is a little bit, um, you know, ahead, it's always important to think about reporting. Um, and um, once again, probably a really good slide to kind of put in your deck as a fundraiser with regards to how you um, go back and tell your story. And also when you're planning your project, just think about things about how you're going to measure your success. Um, that can then mean you've almost um, managed your reporting by the time it comes around. I will refer you to the FRRR Grant Seekers resources on our website um, for more information as well. As you can see, um, there's small videos on there, so it's not all just lots and lots of reading, and there's lots of case studies. Um, so please go in and, and have a look at that if you if you want to, you know, just make your application a little bit stronger. So today, another grant does close on the 10th of August 2023. That is Australian Eastern Standard Time. So um, you know, people in the West and, and South Australia and, and up north, um, just, just letting you know about that time frame so that you don't get caught out short at five o'clock your time. Um, if you're having challenges, um, I really advise you to, you know, contact FRRR as soon as possible. Um, you know, we understand there's some challenges with internet access sometimes or people are working and volunteering. So um, the more we know, the more we can actually support you in your application. The program will be announced in late October. So just when you're not 2032, though, 2023. Sorry about that. Um, so, you know, just when you're thinking about, you know, when you're going to find out about this, just put that in your diary as well because you'll know you should be receiving an email um, that week. Please um, subscribe to FRRR's monthly newsletter because um, that will make you aware of all other grants. Um, and also we have a great sorting hat of grants um, to help you find other funding as well. And look at our Grant Seeker resources. Once again, um, it never hurts to um, kind of strengthen your skills. That's all I have for you today. I want to thank Maddie for joining us and I want to thank Nutrien um, for making this grant possible. It really is a beautiful grant and it really is wonderful to see the applications that come um, from people like you um, that demonstrate just what the need is in the community and um, helps us to understand um, where, where we need to invest and, and also talk to other donors about um, how they can support FRRR and, and communities in rural and regional and remote Australia.